everyone. Uh, this is John Bath, Buck, back again with another Discrete Time Linear Systems video. Uh, this video we're talking about block diagrams. Block diagrams are a graphical representation for difference equations, particularly for linear constant coefficient difference equations, uh, that we'll be using often this semester. Uh, so, uh, But they're a nice way to sort of get a picture of how a system works. And, and from the picture, we can often get a handle on certain properties of the system. Uh, and, and the, but at the same time, they're nice and generic that uh, the same basic ideas apply whether we're thinking about how we would implement this system as a piece of software or maybe a dedicated piece of digital hardware. Uh, either, either approach, we can learn things from block diagrams, uh, so it's why we're going to start with them early this semester and come back to them a couple times as we go through. So again, our, our topic for today are block diagrams. And again, what I, what I said in the intro is these are a way to represent linear constant coefficient difference equations, or LCCDE, because that's quite a mouthful. I'll run out of pixels if I keep having to, to write that over and over again. I'll wear out my stylus before the semester. Uh, and again, our generic, block, our, our generic difference equation, without making any real assumptions other than its linear and constant coefficient, we saw in our earlier video looks like this, right? I have a, a delayed bunch of values of the output with different weights added together. And similarly, on the right-hand side of the equation, I have the weighted sum as L goes from 0 to M of B sub L, or now the weights, times X of N minus L. And so if I think about what's going on in the system, if I wanted to build these things, how many kinds of Legos would I, if, if I thought of it as like a Lego thing, some mathematical Lego, what kind of blocks would I need? What kind of, of pieces do I need in the system? And there's really three things going on if I break this down, right? I need to have a delay I need to have a scaling, and I need to have a sum. Right? And that's true on both sides of the equation. So I really need these three kinds of blocks or some way to represent those three operations to make this work. And so again, the first thing we'll have to, to get a sum is we need an adder. Right? We have a system that takes two different inputs, x1 and x2 of n, brings them together into this type of block diagram, and then the output of the adder is the sum of the two outputs. The second thing we need is, is, is a gain or a, a multiplier, right? And that's, the that's to implement the scaling, which says I need a, a block that I put x of n in and we usually just draw this with, with an arrow with the gain next to it, just because there are a lot of them. So we, we want to be make it something we can draw quickly and efficiently. So if I have a branch that looks like this, it says my out, the output at the end of that branch is A times the input. And then the last one is the delay part. Right? We need to be able to delay it, uh, an output or an input for these, these terms here. So the third piece of this is a delay. And so that block for right now will represent as a box with just a big D in it, so D for delay. And so the output of this box is just the input delayed by one sample. And so I might daisy chain a bunch of these together, uh, sometimes to get lazy later in the semester if I have a chain that's just a whole bunch of them with nothing going on in the middle. I might write d cubed, which says this is really a daisy chain of three delays, but, but we'll write them all out explicitly for now. Okay, so let's see some examples of how we use these to come up with pictures or block diagrams to represent difference equations. Uh, oh, so so the uh, this is the same example I did in the difference equation video. We see I've got a few things going on, but I'm going to rewrite this uh, in color uh, to highlight some things because uh, it'll make it easier to connect to the block diagram. When you first start with this, sometimes it takes a little practice. So we'll say again, y of n, let me rewrite this, y of n. Well, first of all, we would move all this term to the right-hand side, right? Like we saw in the block diagram, or the difference equation class, we want to be able to write this output uh, in terms of the old values of the output and then values of the input. And so I'm going to use uh, the red for the old value of the input, or the old value of the output. So we're saying the current value of the output is the last value of the output scaled by A plus B times the current value 
of the input. And so if I want to make a block diagram, I usually start uh, by having x of n on one side and y of n on the other. And then I sort of need to fill in the map in between them, so how I get from one to the other. So I say, well, I need two things here, right? I need, oh, I need to take the current value of the input and scale it by b. Right? So this is my gain of b, like we saw on the previous page. Right? Here's my gain system, scale by b. And then what do I do with that b? Well, I need to add it to something. So it looks like a good place to put an adder. And what I need to add it to is, well, I need to add it to a version of the, the output that's been delayed by one sample and then scaled. So if I draw that, I could say, well, here's a delay box. So the output of this will be y of n minus 1. And then I'm going to apply a gain of a to that and add it to b of n. So there is my block diagram. I say I want to find the output. This difference equation has sort of been translated into a picture that says to find the output now, sort of that process we were going through earlier in the example for block diagram or for difference equations. I take the output, delay it, scale it by a, add it to the input, and just cycle through, keep repeating this loop, iterating through time to find the output. And so I could use this in one way as, as sort of a sketch of a computer program I could write, like the MATLAB filter command we talked about. Or if this was a piece of hardware, I could have a delay register, a multiplier, an adder, and another multiplier taking the input and, and feed these things together to get a, a piece of real-time GSP hardware. Uh, so that's why block diagrams are so nice. They're, they're versatile and they let us talk about implementation issues without being totally locked down to a particular hardware or software implementation. Because anything you're going to implement a DSP algorithm in has to have a way to scale things by a constant, has to have a way to add things, and it has to have a way to delay things. Another good thing to point out about this figure is, as we saw earlier in the example video, this is a recursive difference equation. So it leads to what we call an infinite impulse response. And this figure starts to show us why. That It turns out that infinite impulse response is deeply connected Having an infinite impulse response is, is deeply connected to having feedback in the block diagram. Right, This branch here is a feedback branch. It's taking the output and bringing it back to do something earlier with it. And so that's where the infinite impulse response comes from. You can almost imagine my impulse response rate is having a, one little pulse coming along and coming into the system at time zero, right? So it goes ka-chunk, and it gets scaled by B, and after that, that pulse just keep, sort of keeps feeding back and looping around. It gets, okay, the pulse comes out with B, and then it loops around and gets multiplied by A, so I get AB, and then another multiply by A and delay, so I get A squared B, and so on. So again, sort of a picture that makes it easy to see what we got by equations on the previous video showing the examples. Uh, to show one more example, this is our, our other example. Uh, again, I can sort of color code it the same way, though it's already been been written uh, in a form where I have y of n alone on the left-hand side. But if I were going to be consistent with the previous slide, I'd write all the things in terms of the input in blue. right? And so now coming back, I'm going to say, well, I have x of n coming into the system. And then I'm going to put it through a delay, right? So this is x of n minus 1. I take that delay thing and scale it by a half. So that gives me this whole term, this half x of n. And I bring it over here. I say, well, I also need another delay to get x of n minus 2. Right, and then I bring that down. Again, uh, scaled by a half, and I'm going to add it to this other branch running along the bottom here. So I have a gain of a half, I delay, gain by a half, another delay, gain by a half. So this, just to label things, this branch here would be a half x of n minus 1. This branch coming, the output of this branch here would be a half of x of n minus 2. And so once I've added those two together, what do I have coming out? Well, that's 
my definition of y of n. Right, so again, this block diagram shows this. Bringing back to oh, another point to make with this, uh, this, we said this was a second order system. Look at, we have two delays. That's not an accident. The order tells me the, the, the number of delays I need in the system. So in the same way, I, didn't, I forgot to make the point here, first order system we saw on the, on the earlier video showing the examples, I looked at this difference equation and said the biggest delay is one, so it's a first order system. Look, it's got one memory unit, one delay in it. The other thing here, we said this is a non-recursive difference equation on the earlier video, so the output is finite impulse response. And look, one consequence of that is I've got no feedback, right? So if I had that impulse flow into this system, it would get delayed and scaled, and then delayed again and scaled, and then we'd be done. It had sort of fallen off the delay line. Okay, so there, uh, there's, there's a quick summary. Block diagrams are a graphical representation, a graphical language even, we can use to talk about implementing uh, difference equations, which are most of the algorithms in DSP and digital signal processing. Uh, and then uh, showing two examples of applying those to turn a difference equation into a block diagram. Okay, so that's all for this time. I'll see you at the next video.